Paris, an iconic and influential city, romanticized in countless books and movies. It has a timeless ability to capture the imaginations of people all around the world. You can go in a skeptic, but once you're exposed to the art, the architecture, the history, the food, it's hard to stay immune to its charms. Good morning from Paris. It's a beautiful August morning. And in this video, we're gonna be sightseeing, showing you some of the beautiful parts of this amazing city, as well as eating some really tasty, iconic French food. So let's go. start off our day, we're gonna get a delicious ham, egg, and cheese crepe. And I like this spot because you can see them making it in front of you and it smells really good. <laughs> the quintessential French crepe originated in Brittany, a region in Northwestern France in the 12th century. It's a thin pancake served with a variety of sweet and savory fillings. In the 20th century, crepes exploded in popularity as a convenient street food and today they are enjoyed all over the world. We order the classic savory crepe combination, a single egg, a generous handful of cheese, and slices of ham. Brown it, fold it, and voila, the perfect crepe. All right, so the dough of this crepe is a little bit different. It's made with buckwheat, water, and salt, and it's gluten-free, so you don't need egg or milk to bind it together. All right, I'm so excited. This thing is massive, about the size of my face. And you can see how much cheese is melted in there. And then it's like crusted and delicious looking. Big, generous pieces of ham. This is a thing of beauty. Mm. Tastes like a nice tangy Parmesan. Mm. Ham is delicious, savory. Mm. It's freaking good. <laughs> it's just, it's really good. Okay, let's go get coffee. In August, Parisians leave the city in droves for an extended vacation. The city is sleepy and a little less crowded. Come September, a period called La Hontre, Parisians return to the city for work and school, and everything goes back to normal. All right, pro tip for traveling to France. It's August, which means a lot of people are on vacation, so a ton of the businesses are closed. <laughs> but there's still a lot of good stuff open. But just keep it in mind, it's gonna be a little bit less bustling than it is normally. The French take their vacation seriously. The French have a rich, storied tradition of bread and pastry making. Boulangeries, or bakeries like this one, are an integral part of Parisian culture and can be found on almost every street corner throughout the city. Merci. Attention, please open the door. Here, uh, here take away because they come first. Take away because they come first. Thank you. And then here, we have the... So no Parisian food excursion. Oh. Bonjour. Bonjour. So the lady who works at the bakery just kicked the next table behind me out because they ordered to go. So I'm happy we ordered for here so we can stay. <laughs> yeah, they're very strict about that here. Apparently if you order to go, you gotta get out of here. <laughs> So no Parisian food excursion is complete without a trip to the boulangerie for some pastries. And we got two different ones. So one is a classic pan au chocolat or chocolate croissant. And it's looking really good. Like just that touch, it feels like so crispy. You can see the melted chocolate in the middle. It's looking good. And then this one is a bit new to me. It's like a cheese pastry. It's made with emmental 
cheese. We'll spell it out. I'm not exactly sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's essentially like a giant Brazilian pão de queijo or cheese bread. That's what it looks like, just on a larger scale. And it's really soft, like incredibly soft, a little bit flaky on the outside. You can see the melted cheese on top. I'm gonna start with this one. It looks really good and it's still warm. really soft and hollow and doughy on the inside. It has a bit of like an eggy flavor. And then of course there's like the richness of the crispy cheese. It's delicious, simple, amazing. Man, this thing is like so flaky. Like, can you hear that? Man. Ooh, all right, let's go for it. Ma'am, oh my God, that is so crispy, buttery and flaky. Every bite is the most satisfying crunch. And there's just a little bit of chocolate, but it's just enough sweetness to make it a perfect bite. Mm, it's so good. And more flavorful. And this guy's really mad about us sitting in front of the door, but the restaurant for the table here, what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> the French politeness. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so you may have heard of the legendary Parisian attitude. They are stereotyped to be a little bit less than agreeable, let's put it that way. And I think right now we just got two solid examples of that. <laughs> with the lady literally kicking out this family behind us because they ordered to go rather than for here. And then this grumpy guy literally just like shoving Lenza aside to go into the apartment. So yeah, that's Paris for you. But we also meet a lot of really nice people. So you just get a mixed bag. No yeah, so to give it to the guy, like we are sitting in front of his door, but like the restaurant set up the table like this. So it's like not really our fault. <laughs> Okay, so this is pretty much the only way we've been getting around Paris. No Uber, no Metro, nothing. These are all over the city and all you have to do is download the app, scan it, and it's pretty affordable. We got a day pass for 12.99 euro and you just get to see everything and they're really fun also. Voila, we made it to our next destination. Vamanos. This is Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris, and it's the most visited necropolis in the world. And you can see behind me, it's home to really elaborate tombs and mausoleums and a lot of famous people were buried here. So a couple include Chopin, Oscar Wilde, Jim Morrison. But we're gonna take a walk around. The grounds are pretty huge. Père Lachaise is designed like a park with winding paths, shady trees, and lots of greenery. It's easy to get lost in here for an afternoon amongst all the beauty. There's so many elaborate stone mausoleums like this, more than you can count. Many of these elaborate tombs and monuments were built in the 19th century in the Gothic Revival style with pointed arches, spires, and intricate carvings. Others are inspired by classical architecture with columns, pediments, and other decorative elements. And this cemetery is absolutely massive. Um, they don't actually know how many people are buried there, so the estimate is anywhere between 300,000 and a million, which is a pretty big range. But what makes it cool is that even though this is one of the top tourist spots in Paris, it's so massive that you still get bits and pieces of the cemetery to yourself. Like right now, we're the only ones around, and it's quite nice. So Jim Morrison's grave is right over there. The lead singer of The Doors, he was part of the 27 Club. He died in 1971. And you can kind of tell where the famous graves are because a lot of people congregate around them. So that's how we found this one.
Now we're on the hunt for Chopin's grave and this one is pretty near and dear to me because I played classical piano for many, many years and Chopin is and was one of my favorites. Okay, Chopin, where are you at? Where are you, Chopin? Chopin! We found it, Chopin's grave. We're headed down to sit on the Senna for a sunset wine and cheese fest. It's just around 8.50 at night. The sun sets quite late in the summer. It is early August and it's really lovely. The weather is perfect. You can see this is like a popular part. All right, we stalked out a spot and strategically chosen our spot next to a very cute dog, of course. <laughs> Great success! <laughs> great. Summertime in Paris is so lovely. We came here once a couple years ago in November and the vibe definitely was not the same. Like it was cold and rainy. Cheers to this absolutely perfect weather. Mmm. Delish. You can see the moon. It's really beautiful here. This is the casual line outside the door of Bullion Republic at 10 p.m. on a Monday. It's like a rock concert. <laughs> and this is definitely a little bit different than what we get in the U.S. Usually by 10 p.m. in major cities even, other than like New York City, for example, restaurants are usually packing up and closing. Bullion Republic is a historic restaurant serving classic French cuisine. It was originally opened in 1906 as a Bullion, a type of affordable restaurant that served simple, hearty dishes at low prices. Okay, so fun story. Lenza almost had his phone stolen at the table. So it was at the corner right here. And I'm over here like on my phone trying to translate the menu. And I look up and this guy has his fingers just like hanging over Lenza's phone like that. <laughs> and then Lenza gets back and he gets super awkward and uncomfortable with Lenzo. And yeah, that was really weird. We almost just got robbed in like a fully packed restaurant. All right, here we have the deviled eggs with mayonnaise and truffle. And we each got our own orders of escargot because we're gluttonous and we don't want to share. <laughs> and these are just nice, delicious snails with butter and a sauce that tastes a bit like pesto. Buttery, the hint of that pesto flavor. It's really good. You can see the pool of butter that's left behind over here. And take a look at the layer. So decadent. Perfectly boiled egg, creamy mayonnaise, light hint of truffle. Let's get started on this French onion soup. There's like an entire loaf of bread, several slices of bread, 
delicious baked melted cheese. Let's get in here. Let me see if I can get like a nice cheese bowl. Man, that looks so good. Mm. So good. Let's move on to the main character of this story tonight. Let's talk about this ham hock. She's beautiful. She's the star. Everybody turns to look at her when she walks into the room. It is the caramelized ham hock, ladies and gentlemen. So let me get in here. You can see the skin. It's like nice and gooey on the outside. I'm gonna get a nice bite with a nice even distribution of skin and meat. Alright, here we go. Mm. Mm. So tender. It's got just a little hint of sweetness and just the slightest bit gamey. And it's like melt in your mouth, like the meat is so soft you barely have to chew it. Yeah.